channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. For today's video, I have a thrift flip for you. I have been diligently working, trying to get through some of the items in my stash and flipping those items so that I can use them in my Christmas displays. So that is what I did for today's video. I took uh, five or six items out of my uh, stash and painted them all up, used decoupage paper on them, and got them all ready to go out for Christmas. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you like the projects I completed for you for today. And without further ado, let's get to them. So this little angel I bought a while ago and I actually bought it broken. The little tail on the bird had been broken off at some point and quite a while ago I actually fixed the tail with some IOT air dry clay and then just let it set on my shelf. And I decided it would be a perfect addition to a Christmas display. So I grabbed it down and I first gave it a coat of the Rust-Oleum 2X in the flat white just to give it a nice base coat of paint. And then I went in with two good even coats of DIY's crinoline, which is this really pretty creamy off-white color. And once that was done and the paint was completely dry, I went in with some DIY clear wax to seal the paint. Now DIY paint is porous and can be reactivated with water, which is why it's so critical that you always seal it. This was a little bit of a a pain I guess because of all of the little areas that were hard to reach so I had to grab my small brush to kind of get that wax work down into all the, the grooves and then I did my best to wipe any excess off with a shop towel then I went in with DIY's golden rule gilding wax which is this gorgeous gold and I first went ahead and applied it with my fingertip and then I went in with that same small brush and just worked that golden rule into all of the areas I couldn't quite reach with my finger and gave it a really good coat of the gold wax. Then I went over it one more time with my finger and then this little angel was finished. My second project are these two candle holders that I had gotten a while ago. Now I have to tell you, these were a bit of a pain. I didn't show any of it on the video, but when I started spraying these and I'm just using the same Rust-Oleum paint only in black, uh, I realized that there was still candle wax that was uh, on these and so I had to take them inside, use my hair dryer, get the candle wax melted, wipe it off, took them back outside, spray it again. Then the candle wax was still kind of tacky so I had to do the whole procedure over again before I was able to finally get them sprayed and ready for paint. <laughs> now the other thing is I absolutely should have used my white paint. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. I guess I intended when I first painted these that I was going to do some distressing, but I changed my mind. So I could have saved myself some time and effort by painting them white underneath, but I didn't. And so I had to use three coats of crinoline to get the black completely covered. So I gave it three good even coats of crinoline and then went in with my DIY clear wax and waxed them both to seal that paint. Once that was done and I had wiped back the excess wax with my shop towel, I moved on to the next step. So since I decided I didn't want to distress these, what I decided I was going to do instead was to use DIY's dark decrepit dust in all of the grooves to make these a little bit more antiqued and patinaed. I could have used dark wax for this, but I really didn't want them completely covered in that dark color. And I thought this was a good alternative. 
Now I'm just going in and kind of using that decrepit dust to shade anywhere where I think uh, shading and gunk would kind of build up on these. And the nice thing is if you keep your brush with a little bit of clear wax handy, if you get too much of the, de the decrepit dust in an area, you can kind of use that clear wax as an eraser. I find it best to go light at first with the decrepit dust and then kind of work in more and more the darker you want it. So I just kept adding a little bit here and there until I finally had achieved the look that I wanted and I was happy with the shading. And then I went over a few of the areas with a little bit more decrepit dust just to add a little bit more age and patina to these. And here you can see the difference between the two candle holders. three is a picture frame I picked up a while ago. So I took all of the guts out of the picture frame and took it outside and gave it a good spray coat of Rust-Oleum 2X in that matte black. And then I went over it with two good even coats of DIY's faded burlap, which is this beautiful, super light brown, almost beigey color uh, that is such a nice neutral. Once that was done and both coats of paint were completely dry, I went in with my damp shop towel and began distressing. Now for this piece, I really wanted to bring out some of that black spray paint, so I did do quite a bit of distressing. Then it was on to sealing my paint, and again for this one, I'm also using the DIYs clear wax to seal this paint. So just brushing on one good even coat and then wiping back any excess with my shop towel. Once the frame was finished, it was time to figure out what exactly I wanted to put into the inside of it. So I grabbed my brand new tissue paper by Redesign called Holly Jolly Hideaway and picked out an image that I liked to put in the frame, cut that out, and then began to place it in my frame. I realized my cardboard needed a white layer, so I went ahead and painted that with white swan, cleaned up the glass while that dried, and then began putting things together. Then when I flipped it over, I remembered that it had all that ugly writing on the back, so so I went ahead and covered that up with DIY little black dress and then finished putting my picture frame together. I reattached the hardware and then this one was done. Project four is another frame that I had laying around and this one is getting kind of the same starting treatment with a spray coat of the Rust-Oleum spray paint in matte black. And for this one, I actually want it to be black. So I'm going over it with two good even coats of DIY's little black dress. Now for this one, I knew I didn't want to distress it because I didn't want to go back to that silver that was the original color of the frame. So I am putting two coats of paint on it in the hopes that that will help uh, with the spray paint really cover that silver well. Once that was done and both coats of paint were completely dry, it was time for waxing. I went ahead and used black wax over the little black dress. I think this really sharpens up the black paint and makes it even deeper in color and just makes it even more beautiful. Once that was done and I wiped back any excess, I went ahead in with the Golden Rule Gilding Wax again, just with the tip of my finger, rubbing the gold wax all over all of the detail on this frame. I wasn't very careful. I just kind of wanted it to be more gold than black in the end. And so I just kind of smeared it on there in places, but I absolutely love the look of it and how it came out. 
Once that was done and the frame was set aside and finished, it was time to move on to an image for the inside. And I cut another piece of that beautiful paper out and then began uh, putting the frame back together, just kind of cleaning up my glass, getting everything prepped and ready and then put that new decoupage paper in. With this one, I did paint the entire back because it was so messy, um, but I love how it came out. My fifth and final project for this video are these two boxes that I've had sitting around for a while. Now I completely forgot to record any of the fix that I had to do on the smaller boxes bottom, but it was very cracked and yucky inside. So I had to sand it and then I used Bondo on it and then had to re-sand it and then put more Bondo in it and then sand it again just to get the bottom so that it wasn't wavy and it was nice and sturdy and somewhat smooth and ready to go for paint. Then I moved on to painting and I started on these again with another coat of the black matte spray paint and then went over both boxes on the inside and three sides on the outside with DIY's aviary, which is this beautiful, beautiful green color. Uh, one of the colors that I have chosen for my vignettes and displays for Christmas. Then I went over one side, one of the long sides, with two coats of DIY's White Swan in preparation for more decoupage paper. Now, admittedly, it's not necessary to have a white base under your decoupage paper. I just like it because it helps make that decoupage image really stand out and shine a little more than if it were against a color. Then I went in and did quite a bit of distressing. I wanted some of that black paint that was underneath the green to kind of shine through just because it is another color that is going to be in all my displays and vignettes. And I think it would help tie everything together just a little bit more. Also, there is some black in the decoupage papers as well. Once that was done and I was happy with the amount of distressing, I moved on to sealing these boxes. And for that, I'm using DIY's Big Top this go around. And I am going to go ahead and seal the white paint as well. And the reason I do that before I begin decoupaging is so that if my decoupage medium reactivates the white paint, it doesn't leach white paint into my paper. I've had that happen before and it's really not fun. Once my boxes were completely sealed and dry, it was time to move on to decoupaging. Now, the cool thing about the Holly Jolly Hideaway decoupage paper is that it comes with not one, not two, but three sheets of coordinating paper that you can choose from. So for the uh, bigger box, I decided on this particular sheet that had beautiful Christmas trees and gifts and said words like Merry Christmas, and it was just really pretty. So I picked out a piece, cut it out to size, and then began putting down my liquid patina to use as my decoupage medium. So I start at one side, put a little bit of liquid patina, making sure that it's a nice, even, thin coat of the liquid patina down, and then just worked my way across across the, block, the box, uh, putting down the paper and a little bit more patina as I went. Once it was down and I was confident it was completely adhered, I went over it with a second coat of the liquid patina and then set that box aside and then used the third sheet of decoupage paper and picked out a scene that I wanted to use for the smaller box. Same procedure, just putting that liquid patina down across the box little in little increments and then putting my paper down and smoothing it out as I go. Once it's down, go over it one more time with another good coat of the liquid patina and then they're ready to sit and dry until it's time to sand off the edges. 
For this, I just grabbed some 150 grit sandpaper and in a downward sweeping motion went around the edges of the box and removed that excess paper. Then I did go back and paint the edges on the bottom of these boxes, completely forgot to record that part. And then these guys were finished and I absolutely love how they both came out. my projects for today. I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please remember to like my video and subscribe if you haven't already. And in the comments below, let me know which of the projects in today's video was your favorite. Uh, just a reminder, on my website, you can find any of the DIY products that I use today. That's www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. It's listed in the description box below and I so appreciate your orders. Um, and for Tuesday's video. I'm hoping to complete another thrift flip for you. If that doesn't happen uh, because I run out of time, I am going on a junk run on Sunday. So there's a chance that it could be a thrift haul. I'm not really sure at this point exactly <laughs> what I'm going to be able to get done. So we'll see. Uh, at any rate, it'll be a fun video and I hope you'll join me back here on Friday or Tuesday. <laughs> and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Thank you.